Hey guys, this is Jim K and 4YCD and you're watching FEP Labs Radio. I want to go through DMR setup for your DMR HT or DMR mobile today. I've done a video on this in the past and I kind of wanted to update it and maybe make it a little more clear, a little more concise. So let's get at it. Thanks for coming. So I'm going to use the CPS or customer programming software from my VTech DMR6 X2. Um, the DMR software is all pretty much the same. It varies from vendor to vendor. A lot of it is basically the same software, and the ones that aren't the same exact program work pretty much the same exact way. I'm going to make this probably two or three separate videos, because if I don't, they're going to be too long, and you'll fall asleep. I fall asleep saying it. So this one is going to be basic DMR setup. Now, what I've got here is a brand new config straight out of the CPS. I told it file new and it deleted all my information. It deleted everything. <clears throat> and I want to walk through a few of the things in the CPS and how we're going to set them up. And there's, there's basically, I think, about five steps to getting a contact in. And then the second part of this series the next video will be more detail about what some of the functions are uh, specific to DMR and in the CPS software. And again, those are basically the same amongst all the CPS software. They vary a little bit in features possibly, but they're generally the same thing. <clears throat> so it doesn't matter if you're using a DMR 6X2 like I've got here set up or whether you're using an M. Uh, uh, MD380, I think that's TYT makes that one, or uh, a Baofeng or or whoever's, uh, Motorola. All of the DMR radios all work pretty much the same way, and all the CPS software works pretty much the same way. Now, to set up DMR contacts, you've got to have five things. The first thing you've got to do, the very first thing, is put in your radio information. And so this radio information is going to be your DMR ID. And without that in here, none of this is going to work. So this is absolutely step one, okay? So my DMR ID, 3152157, that's my DMR ID. I only have one 6X2. I'm going to call this uh, BTEC 6X2. This is just the name of the radio as it shows up. As you can see here, you could have multiple radios and use the same config for each radio. That's like advanced and we're not going to fool with that anywhere near today. So for now, this is my DMR ID. You would have to use your own and then whatever you want to call your radio. So that's, that's it. So that's step one. We're done. We're done with step one. We're on our way to success here. All right. The next thing we've got to do <clears throat> is we've got to put in digital talk groups that we may want to connect to, all right? Now, this says talk groups. These can be group calls or private calls. A group call is to a talk group. So Toad's uh, DMR Digital, uh, that's um, one talk group. You could have uh, America Link. You could have HRCC Link. You could have any number of group calls. Um, there's probably somewhere around 1,500 DMR talk groups in Brandmeister, which is kind of where this is focused more than anything. But it doesn't really matter. You could do this uh, for any of the other DMR networks, but Brandmeister is pretty much the most popular. It doesn't matter which network. The functions all still remain the same. So for now, we're going to make this pretty simple. I'm going to put in Toads Digital right here. That is a group call, and the Toad's Digital DMR ID is 3192083. And I don't want any call alert on it, and I'm going to save that. So there we go. Now I have my digital group in there. Now here, if I remembered any, I could put in other talk group IDs for different talk groups. And we may come back and do that in a later video, but I just want to walk through the step for getting this started. Everything extrapolates out. It doesn't matter if it's one talk group you've got in here or 50. This all works the same way. So we're going to leave this in here by itself for now. That is our, our first talk group. But you could also add individual calls. So for example, you could add in Parrot. 
which is 4,000. I believe it's a private call. So let's go ahead and add Parrot in. Parrot is a echo back service, and we don't want to make that a group call. We want to make that a private call. And so, for example, uh, I'm friends with uh, KM9G, TO, temporarily offline. If I knew his uh, call ID, which I could look up, I could put it in here and I could have a, a, a thing to call TO's radio directly. We're not going to fool with that. We're just going to put in Parrot, so we've got a couple things. So Parrot is 9990, and we don't want a call alert on it. And now we have two digital contacts, a group call and a private call. See? Easy peasy. So let's go and move on to the next thing. Okay, so I've popped up my um, hotspot. This is my DMR hotspot, and we're not going to look at this very long, but I wanted to point out a couple things here. So uh, information we're going to need down the road. This is the frequency that my hotspot is on, 433.25 megahertz. Um, this tells me some technical information about the hotspot. That's a completely different video. My DMR ID is our DMR repeater, because this is for my hotspot. We're on color code one. Color code and time slot both are similar to PL tones or, or call tones on an analog repeater. And so for me to be able to work in a talk group, I need to know the color code and the time slot that I'm using for whatever particular device I'm connecting to. So I'm going to file that information away <clears throat> because we'll need it in a second. Okay, so the next piece we want to do is we want to create channels now for the two talk groups that we created. So I'm just going to double click that and go into the channel name. I'm going to call this Toads Digital. And then I'm going to put in the frequency for 33.25. And this is Simplex. So now that's set. This is a type of digital. This is a hotspot, so I'm going to set this to low power. If you're working on a hotspot, there is no reason to set high power. Uh, it's less work for your radio, better for your battery, and your hotspot certainly does not appreciate the difference between low power and high power. Run with low power when you're doing a hotspot. All right, now there's some settings in here we're going to gloss over for this video. They don't really matter. We're not going to mess with a bunch of them, but I want to point out a couple things as we go. The bandwidth for a DMR digital is always going to be 12.5 kilohertz. And you'll notice here that's grayed out. I can't change it. That's because this is digital and the CPS software knows that my bandwidth is set to 12.5K. All right. I'm not going to fool with APRS. We're going to leave transmit permit always on. And what this means is that I can't transmit if someone is keyed up. And you have several options on this. We're going to leave it alone. It doesn't really matter. Um, I would probably set this to channel free. That way, if there's anybody talking on it, my radio won't let me key up over them and, and bollocks things up. So we'll set that to channel free. APRS, we're not going to fool with. All right. The next thing we're going to look at is up here. And again, this is APRS. Some of this stuff is for repeaters and getting fancy. We're not going to mess with that. So when you have a channel, a channel is what tells your radio what digital contact we're going to use. Now, this is already selected Toads Digital. It's the first digital contact we created, and it's just what the software defaulted to. Here is a list of the digital groups we have available, Parrot and Toads Digital. So we're going to keep Toads Digital. If we wanted to change that, we could select Parrot, and we'll do that in a second. So that's our contact. That's that digital contact we already created. All right. What radio are we going to use? Well, we only have the one, the BTEC 6X2, so it's already selected for us. Our color code, remember we looked at the hotspot. We're going to use color code 1. That's the default for the hotspots, for most PyStar hotspots as far as I know. And then we need to know what time slot. And we're going to use slot 2 because that is the time slot that showed on the PyStar screen, correct? All right. So for now, we're going to skip receive group. We're amateur radio. We're not allowed to use encryption. So we're going to skip all of that because that has to do with encryption. This information we're not going to mess with either. We are set to go here. All this down here is for analog. So we don't need to mess with it. So we're going to tell it okay. 
and we've now saved our first contact. Now this is for my hotspot, all right? Now, <clears throat> if I wanna use a local repeater, I need to do things a little differently. So we're gonna click this next one and we're gonna call this toads slash R for repeater. This is not gonna use my hotspot, this is gonna use the local DMR repeater. That is a different frequency. And because it's a repeater, it has an offset And we're going to set that just like we would set an analog repeater with our five megahertz offset. That is digital. I'm going to set the transmit power to high on this because this is a repeater that's in town, which is about 20, 30 miles from me. This will not work unless I set it to high. All right. Same kind of setting here. We're going to set this to channel free. That way I can't key up. My radio will not let me key up if there's traffic on the channel. All right. Other than that, it's the same. You see, the only difference here we've got is the frequency. We're going to come over here to the digital section where the important business is. I still want to use Toad's Digital. The radio ID is the same. The color code is the same. I'm going to change to slot 2, which I believe is correct for that repeater. This is something you'll have to check for a repeater. Um, there's a semi-standard on this, and I believe slot 2 is used for talk groups and slot one is used for local talk groups, uh, which is a whole nother video down the list. Again, we're going to skip receive groups. That's all the crypto stuff. We're going to skip all that. We don't have anything to do with analog and we're done. So now you'll notice we have two channels here. We have a channel to talk on Toads Digital on our hotspot and a channel to talk on Toads Digital on our repeater. So at this point, if I write this to the radio, we're ready to rock and roll. I've got two channels, but I want to set them up and separate them. I also want to add in some non-digital information here. So we're going to open up another channel. So now we have five channels. Okay, so we've created our list of channels here and we've got a mix and match. We've got a couple of digital channels and we've got three analog channels. So you could go and stop right here and push this to your radio and you'd be ready to go. I like to break this up and that's what we're gonna use zones for. So on the 6X2 and on most DMR radios, they have the zone function. And what zones are is a collection of channels arranged however it makes sense to you. A logical collection of channels, okay? So when we go to our zone tab over here, we don't have any zones created. So we're going to create them. Now this is one place where this software will look a little different than the software you may be using, but the function is the same. So we're going to create a zone. We're going to call it, we're going to make a hotspot zone. And we're going to put Toads Digital in it because that was our hotspot channel. And that's all we're going to put in that zone. And we're going to save that one. And we're going to create another zone. I'm going to hit next. And we're going to make another zone and we're going to call it analog. And we're going to drop in VHF call. UHF call and my W4AP repeater. And now we're going to make one more zone and we're going to call it repeater if I click in the right place. This is digital repeater, so we'll call this digi, uh, we'll just call it repeater. And th to me, in my head, this is going to mean digital repeaters because it's not in the analog zone. And so here we're going to add Toad's repeater and we're going to add nothing else. And there we go. So now we have three zones. The hotspot zone has Toad's digital. The analog zone has UHF, VHF calls and my local repeater. And then the repeater zone, and these are just names. The repeater zone has the local DMR repeater 
and it has the toads contact that is for the digital repeater and that's the one we put the slash r on so i'm going to jump back to the channels again real quick here and point this out so we have toads digital which is on my hotspot frequency and this right here the channels are where you tie together the digital contacts that we created as and then you tie them to a specific frequency and you tell the radio what kind of frequency it is is it digital is it analog what channel uh, the channel name and, and what digital contact it's going to use now I know some of you are looking at this going why does these all say touch digital <laughs> it's kind of a bug in this particular software these are analog channels and if we jump into one of these and look at it it shows Toads Digital for the contact, but this is all grayed out. I can't change it. It's kind of stupid. It's the way this software displays the information. It, it does not matter. It doesn't mean this is wrong. This is just not used because this is an analog channel. All right. So unfortunately, it mucks up this screen and makes it a little confusing. But again, unless you're on a digital frequency, this contact doesn't matter. So for these three analog channels, it doesn't matter. So now I've added two more channels. And in this particular software, and in most of them, I can export this and put this out to a spreadsheet so I could rearrange this however I want. And ironically, if you export it out to a spreadsheet, then you can clean up where contact is set for non-digital channels and just wipe that field out. They're all using the only radio I have, the BTEC 6X2, and these are the channel names. So in my scheme, without a slash R, it means it's a hotspot frequency. If you have multiple hotspots, so for example, I have an open spot that I carry in my truck. If I was to add it in, I would have to create a toad slash hotspot and um, parrot slash hotspot and add in two more channels with the hotspot frequency that I carry in my truck. So now we've got a few more channels. Let's go back to our zones. We need to update the list a little bit. Let's go to hotspot. We want to put parrot in hotspot as well. And then we want to go to our repeater, which is our digital repeaters. And we're going to put parrot slash R in there. So now we have two digital contacts for the local repeater, the local DMR repeater our same three analogs, and our two uh, digital contacts for hotspot. So that's basically how it works. <clears throat> this is pretty much good to go at this point. Now, there's a lot of other things we can do, and we'll talk about those in, um, in another video. I'm, this is going to be a series, maybe two, at least another video, and maybe a third one, and kind of go through some of the detailed information. But that is the basic setup of doing a DMR code plug. And that's it. There's not that much to it. Okay, guys, so we've got our code plug created and we're pretty much done with this for today. We're gonna come back and explore some of the other options and the other features of the DMR system and how the DMR radios work in uh, my next video. So make sure you check back for that. Guys, that's gonna be it for today. If you would give me a thumbs up, make sure you subscribe to the channel, please. And uh, ring the bell so you get notified whenever I post any new content. Thanks, y'all. 73.